What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down three tips for dual threat quarterbacks to be successful. So we're going to be talking a lot about throwing on the run and the improper mechanics of throwing on the run, how you guys can improve your extend playability, and how you guys can make off-platform throws because that is something that is required of you to play at that next level nowadays. So I hope this video helps you guys out, gives you some value, and teaches you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you want to get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to to five more states across the country for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So actually it's four states because we're in Chicago, Illinois right now currently for a camp, but then we're going to be coming out to Dallas, Texas next month, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So this is a skill building camp. It's not a combine. It's not a showcase. And you can expect only 10 to 12 guys per position group there. It's not one of those big camps where it's just about running you through reps. So if you guys want to get better this off season, check out that very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So one of the main things you have to do as a dual threat guy is be able to throw on the run. Now, I wouldn't necessarily consider Trevor Lawrence as, you know, the truest dual threat like a Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray type guy, but he displays great throwing on the run mechanics. And this is what all you guys can um, kind of take home from this. Okay. So now throwing on the run is all about stepping with the opposite foot. You're, you're a fast guy, right? If you're a dual threat, you can obviously get out of the pocket and run. One of the things that I got myself in trouble with a lot when I played quarterback was I would only throw on the run and do those situations where it was like a perfect sprint out. Everything was blocked up. I had time. But when I got out of the pocket and I was chased, I just relied on my athleticism and I'd take off and run. So we have to be able to extend the play on the run. And these are the mechanics to do so. So I'm going to play this thing full speed with Lawrence real quick. And this is a great example of torque separating the hips and shoulders and throwing with a lot of velocity on the run. So when you guys go on the run, the key is stepping with your throwing side foot. So if you're a right-handed guy, that would mean that you're stepping with your right foot. If you're a left-handed guy, that'd be your left foot. So you see how Trevor Lawrence steps with his right foot. When you step with that right foot and you can point your toes in the direction of the throw that you want to go to. So if you want to throw this thing to the sideline, you would point your toes towards the sideline. If you wanted to make a throw that was more so back over the middle of the field, you would point your toes towards the middle of the field. Because that step, what that does is that will load your hips there. That will get your hips in the angle of the throw to start. Now, when you step there and when your hips get there, you have to rotate your shoulders back and close that front side like Trevor Lawrence does right here. What a lot of guys will do is they'll step with that throwing side foot, but they will spread open. That front shoulder will come open as they step with the throwing side foot, and that doesn't give you enough torque. How do you throw in the pocket? You're in a good stance. You drive off that back leg. You take a stride with your front leg, but as that front foot's going down, as your hips are rotating through, those shoulders stay loaded back so you can get some more velocity to it. Same thing right now when we throw on the run. You have to step solid with that throwing side foot. That's when those shoulders stay loaded back. So now that coil of energy with your hips is what will make that ball shoot off. Now, that ball will probably shoot off your hand if you do these next two things correctly. So as a dual threat guy, these mechanical aspects definitely apply. If you guys can get out of the pocket, you guys can extend the play, but also finish the play by delivering an accurate ball on the run, you're going to be a way more consistent prospect, okay? So now, what he does here to make sure the release point is in a good spot is at the finish of the throw, he stays square with his upper half. So many quarterbacks on the run will get to this position, and then this front elbow starts to swing down as the throw starts to come through. So what will end up happening is, is that release point will swing up. Your body split down like a midline. If your elbow swings down, your release gets pushed up. If your shoulder swings this way, your release gets pushed wide. So we have to make sure that I stay parallel with my shoulders, parallel with my hips, and my hand stays somewhere by my chest so my release point can be accurate. Now, your release point can be wherever you want it to be, but if you don't finish through with the proper leg kick, that's going to screw up the throw as well. What a lot of guys will do is, especially when they're rolling out to the left side, they'll step with that throwing side foot, but that leg kick will take them towards the sideline. And the leg kick will screw up where your hips are loaded. You load your hips with that throwing side foot, but you keep your hips loaded with that leg kick. So what I tell my quarterbacks, you almost want to think of it like you have sand on your toe and you're trying to kick sand at that target. So if you can step with the throwing side foot, as you step, you rotate, then we kick through and finish square. That ball will be consistent. That ball will be accurate. And that ball will have velocity. And that is how you can be that true dual threat guy. A dual threat is a guy who can run 
and a guy who can pass, not just a guy who's fast and can throw the ball far. You have to be a pure passer if you want to play at that next level as a dual threat, especially in today's day and age. Let's play this thing again full speed. Great example of the proper mechanics throwing on the run. You see nice tight spiral and accurate shot. So now, the second thing that dual threat guys have to be comfortable with, another problem that I got myself in a lot of trouble with, is that I, you, whenever you're in uncomfortable situations back here, do not drop your eyes. So this is going to be a situation where um, Zach Wilson's getting some pressure off the edge, going to be doing something called the conflict climb where you step through, protect the ball. But I want you to look at his eyes. His eyes never drop. As a dual threat guy, I'll play this full speed, then we'll talk about it. So he's getting pressure off the edge, conflict climb. His eyes stay downfield the entire time so he can deliver a strike. Let's talk about this. So the entire time is a dual threat quarterback. You obviously have athleticism. You can obviously get out of the pocket. You can obviously go run. You can make people miss if you're like, a, you know, Kyler Murray, like Johnny Manziel, Lamar Jackson type guy. Now, when you're doing that, you're very tempted to sometimes just beat them with speed because you've probably gotten away with it your whole entire life. Youth ball, high school ball, you've been able to just pull the ball down and go run. But if you're maybe not the, a 4 3 40, 4 4 40 guy in college, you're not going to be able to do that as frequently because everybody in college is fast, everybody's explosive, everybody's big, and everybody has good technique. So you have to rely on your passing skills first. We want to be a passer first. So the second you would feel pressure, what I used to do a lot of is I'd feel pressure, I'd just go dark and run. I, and listen, I'd go pick up 10, 15 yards. It's not like I wouldn't pick up 10, 15 yards. Maybe a little less than that sometimes, maybe five, maybe seven. It wouldn't be a negative gain. But why? would I pick up 10, 15 and I'm doing all the work? Let's get the ball to my playmakers. Receivers are your playmakers. Those are the guys that make big plays for you. Our job is to get them the ball. So that's got to be my mindset always. Whenever I'm extending a play, my eyes need to stay downfield. I'm getting pressure off the edge and I take off and run to the left, my eyes stay downfield. Do not drop those eyes. Believe me, fellas, that may seem like basic advice. You might have been told this from the time you were a little guy, but this is something that a lot of quarterbacks don't do. They feel pressure, they panic, they look at the rush, eyes drop, you lose everything. Eyes need to stay up the entire time. And when you were doing drill work, you were working hurdles, ladders, you know, stuff that's going to get you out of the pocket and get you out fast, you got to keep your eyes up. If you guys are working at school, like sometimes guys will have like bag drills or something where quarterbacks will shuffle through it, you should never once look down. You step on a bag, who cares? You're putting yourself in a realistic game situation by always having your eyes up. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Zach Wilson hitting that conflict climb and then delivering this strike downfield. So last but not least, one thing I want to talk about is off-platform throws. Now, again, I know Baker Mayfield isn't that true dual threat guy. He's not like, a again, Kyler Murray type guy, Lamar Jackson type guy who can get out and run a little bit. But he's a pretty athletic dude, I would say. And the thing that he does very well, you know, and I know a lot of people love to criticize him, but when he's healthy, he is very, very good at making these uncomfortable off-platform throws. So this is a situation where he's rolling left and he's flipping his hips to deliver a strike downfield. So this is something that a lot of dual threat guys don't do. They're not comfortable making off-platform throws because when their feet aren't set, they have such good athleticism that they'll just take off and run. They'll be, they'll be on a little uncomfortable, but because they're such a great athlete, they can go pick up seven yards. They'll just put the ball down and go rather than extend the play and get it to my playmaker and pick up 27 yards rather than seven yards. So let's watch this thing. So this Baker Mayfield, he does something we call a hook replace step. And this is off platform as it gets. So this type of throw, I like working this hook replace like with my quarterbacks. If we have like a route where quarterback escapes the pocket, maybe we had a receiver on the left side running an out route, we're rolling left, he flips around and breaks back to the inside, so I don't want to roll left and hit that throw on the run, I want to flip my hips, and I use something called a hook replace, so that's what Mayfield does here, he hooks with the left foot, so he hooks the left foot, replaces where the left foot was with the right foot, and now he's in a position to throw, but he's got so much momentum towards the sideline that he is off platform. So mechanically as a quarterback, when I do this, I have to make sure my weight gets to the correct spot. Because again, like, yes, I could say it all day long. I could sit here and say, hey, quarterbacks, if you're a dual threat, you want to be able to make off-platform throws. How do I make off-platform throws? When you got to flip your hips and you got to move uncomfortable in the pocket, it all comes down to how much weight you could have on this back leg. Not how much, but can you get enough weight to the back leg so you could transfer your weight normally, right? So what Baker Bayfield does here is when he does this hook replace, he hooks, replaces, he's got his weight loaded on that back leg, about 70%. So if he has momentum to the sideline, if he's balanced, he can transfer his weight no matter where he's at. 
He could shift that weight to the front foot, get his hips to rotate through, hips going through before the ball, and give this thing a shot. And you see that little pop step that he takes with the front foot, that little hop. A lot of people like to talk about Aaron Rodgers doing that. That's that step that comes from off-platform throws if you get to a balanced position. So again, mechanically, that's how you would make those off-platform throws. It's the same concept as a normal throw. It's just you have to get your weight to that good spot, even when you have momentum to the sideline, momentum stepping up, and your feet aren't exactly set. So off-platform throws, dual threat guys, we have to get comfortable making those throws look easy because, again, brings you back to the same thing. Want to be a passer first. Let's play this clip again one more time. This is a great shot here by Baker Mayfield, flipping his hips, transferring his weight, and driving this shot downfield. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We uh, always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come get some work in with us, we just got done with our Chicago, Illinois training camp, but now we're coming out to Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.